Hi there, the king as we know is the most important piece, that's why it is very natural to protect it in order to avoid any attack or checkmate, and for that we avoid exposing the king. In the first moves of the game, what we call the opening stage, I cannot think of any situation on which we are going to bring the king to an active square. Even in middle game positions, it is normally great to find a shelter for the king, although as we saw when we studied king walks, there might be some exceptional cases on which it is good to activate the king. On the other hand, whenever the king cannot be attacked easily, we actually want the opposite. We want to have an active king that can be ready to participate in the game. The king can attack the opponent's pieces, might even collaborate to attack the opponent's king, and might also support any passed pawn that we might have. So with that in mind, it is very natural to ask ourselves when should we activate our king, because when our king cannot be attacked, we want to have the more active king. And the answer to that question is not that simple. The general answer will be that it's normally going to be in the ending stage of a game, but the line between the middle game and the ending can sometimes be very blurry. So ultimately it is going to be a situation on which our king cannot be attacked easily. And this, as we'll see, will not necessarily depend on the firepower that our opponent will have, it will depend on the specific position. Now let's start with this position which is pretty clear. Here White played the very nice move f5, which is a temporary pawn sacrifice because after taking the pawn, White played the move king to f4, activating the king. And here Black continued with the move rook to e6, giving back the pawn. In any case, this pawn is going to be lost. For example, after king to g6, we just give a check. And then we capture on f5. Or if black defends the pawn with rook to f7, we can play rook to g3 here as well, and then we play rook to g5 and we'll get the material back. So black tried an interesting idea to activate his rook by playing the move rook to e6, and after taking on f5, we see how white activated his king, and in this position I think it's pretty clear that there's no easy way to attack the king, black doesn't even have a check, so here activating the king is pretty logical, and here white actually has an advantage, in this case a decisive advantage, because after rook to g6, which is black's idea to play rook to g4, e6 and rook to g4, let's evaluate the position now, white has a much better king, the king is much more active, but black on the other hand has a more active rook. Sometimes the advantage of having a more active king is not as decisive as we saw in the other situations on which we could attack the opponent's king. But here white has another very important advantage, which is this pawn on e6, which is a pass pawn. So here white has a much better position, even a winning position, not only because of the king, but also because of this pawn on e6. So black has a better rook, but this is not enough to compensate white's advantages. And the game ended actually quite shortly after king to e5, so we see that now this king is going to support the pass pawn. Rook to e4, king to d6, and white is losing a pawn, but after rook to e3, this pawn will not be able to be stopped. Actually, black resigned. For example, if king to f8, we can just play king to d7 and push the pawn. Let's analyze this very interesting position. Here, white played the very strong move king to c4, activating the king. So here, black has a lot of material, a lot of firepower, black has two rooks and a bishop, and normally two rooks and a bishop are more than enough to give a checkmate, but in this particular position it is good to activate the king because the king will come to b5 and the king is going to be on light squares and black cannot even give a check to a king on b5, and this king is going to be ready to attack this pawn on b6, that's why in this case activating the king was a great decision even though black has a lot of material. And white actually grabbed this opportunity because here playing any other move, for example rook to e1, just doing nothing, here black can play c4 himself and stop white from entering on c4, and here black would be doing much better than in the game. And in the game after king to c4, white also has control of this d file, so white also has better pieces in addition to having a better king. And after bishop to e7, rook to d7, Black played rook c6 to c7, and after exchanging a pair of rooks, white then played king to b5, and white has a much better position 
the king is active, ready to take this pawn or to invade if the rook goes to b7 and white got a much better position and won the game in just a few moves. Another misconception or general rule that is not very accurate is that when we have queens on the board we shouldn't activate our king. In many cases this is correct but sometimes it might be a great idea to activate the king. For example in this position first of all white has an extra pawn but with queens on the board there might be some ideas for black to give a perpetual check but here white played the very nice move king to g4 and the king is now ready to attack this pawn. So an important idea is that after taking this pawn we might even get a pass pawn on the h-file and black doesn't have any immediate checks that's why here black tried the move queen to b8 and white played a very practical move queen to d3 and we can imagine the king coming to h5 and black is not going to have many checks there. Black played queen to g8 giving a check and after king to h5 queen to f7 white took the pawn and here black is trying to get checks and annoy white's king and here white could have tried king to h5 but white even played a simple move king to g7 now planning to play queen to g6 if black keeps on giving checks and although white gave this pawn now white changed his plan a little bit first gave a few checks with the queen after queen to b5 and queen to c5 and now brought the king not only to attack this pawn because as we'll see the king is now also going to participate in the attack black tried giving a few checks but we see that white's king is getting active and black is not getting a perpetual check the game continued a few moves queen to g8 king to d7 queen f7 queen to e7 queen takes and after queen to b4 king to a7 here white played this very nice active move with the king king to c6 and we see that black doesn't have any checks so this king is very safe there and also helping the queen to give a checkmate queen to b7 is a big threat and in this position black resigned black could have tried to stop this checkmate on b7 but here white can simply play queen to a5 and after king to b8 white can even take this pawn but even simpler is just to play queen to d8 and after king to e7 queen to c7 force the exchange of queens and this pass pawn is going to promote so whenever we can activating the king can be great but we need to triple check if our opponent doesn't have any attacking chances on our king and having a more active king is not always a decisive or a huge advantage even if we have a similar pawn structure to our opponent and same material but a more active king our opponent might have other more active pieces to compensate a less active king.